This is News 24. I'm Erin Bates. We know that on Friday evening, Turkish soldiers stormed newsrooms for broadcasters CNN and TRT World. But what some of you may not know is that one of our own journalists, Ben Said, formerly of ENCA and now TRT World executive producer, was in the newsroom in Istanbul when the soldiers stormed in. And he joins us now via Skype from Istanbul in Turkey. Hi, Ben. Hi, Erin. Ben, can you just talk us through what happened in those minutes shortly before midnight when soldiers came onto the premises? Yeah, I mean, we'd been uh, sort of winding down our shift. It was late at night here in Istanbul, as you say. And uh, we started getting some uh, reports that soldiers had blocked uh, the two main bridges in Istanbul that connect Europe with Asia, uh, the Bosphorus bridges. Uh, and I then saw a wire coming through, a news wire from Reuters, I think it was, uh, saying that there had been shots fired in uh, Ankara, the capital. I then uh, assumed at that point that it was some major security threat, possibly uh, Daesh or ISIS, uh, or one of the domestic terror groups here in Turkey. So when the soldiers burst into the news station, while well, it was very alarming at first, uh, I just assumed that they were here to actually protect us, uh, that there'd been some major security threat, and that they were here to protect the station. They ordered us out of the newsroom. We gathered in the car park outside. Uh, they started getting quite aggressive, and they were clearly very tense. Um, and they then said to us, you guys need to get in your buses, you need to get in your cars, you need to leave immediately. Uh, we uh, started doing that. They asked us to hand over all our phones. We did that. Uh, they forced us to leave the premises. It was only on the way home uh, when uh, Mark Klusner, another South African journalist, also formerly of ENCA, uh, said to me, something about this is not quite right. And then we thought to ourselves, could this be a coup? Surely not. In Turkey, a coup in 2016 can't be. Went home turned on the television, followed things for the next few hours through our local contacts here. We managed to get word that there was indeed a, an attempted military takeover of the government. Uh, and we spent the rest of the evening outside listening to jets flying very low overhead, fighter jets, uh, a lot of gunfire and, and tank fire in the distance, and wondering really uh, what this country was going to wake up to the next morning. Yeah. You spoke there about having your phones confiscated and there's been quite a lot of reportage about the role of social media and where it played a part but also where it was clamped down upon, where networks like Facebook and Twitter were limited. Did you experience that yourself over the weekend when you went back into the newsroom or is it pretty much back to normal? It's pretty much back to normal. By the next day it was uh, running fairly smoothly. I'm not sure whether the coup plotters managed to uh, throttle the internet to the extent where social media wasn't working, or it was, a sim it was simply a case of there were so many users on the network uh, trying to find out about family and friends and what was going on in the country that uh, it slowed things down. What I do know is that they totally underestimated the way that modern media works and how people communicate in this day and age. They seized the uh, state broadcasters, they uh, seized CNN Turk, which is a private broadcaster, but there were at least another 15 television stations, television news stations that are privately owned uh, in this country that they did not seize and were still broadcasting pretty freely. Again, they didn't seem to understand that people could communicate on social media uh, and that the president managed, President Erdogan managed to uh, get on live television via FaceTime and uh, tell people to get out onto the streets mm -hmm. and to seize their country back is a sign of how things have changed. In the 1980s and the 1970s, seizing a couple of television stations, particularly the state broadcasters, would have been enough. But in this day and age, it simply isn't. And that is quite remarkable. I mean, that moment when you saw the head of state, the president of a country, on a smartphone and then broadcasting out to viewers. Ben, I'm interested in, in looking at your career, and you've done a number of high-risk stories and stories in, in dangerous areas. How has it been, on the one hand, being part of a newsroom, and you say you've gone right back to work, and then also living through something where you're facing soldiers who purportedly thought they were doing an exercise and a drill? 
Yeah, I mean, it was uh, fairly uh, hair-raising at, uh, at first, um, you know, also because not understanding Turkish very well, it was very difficult to follow what was going on and what the true intentions of these soldiers were. So, uh, you know, we were uh, seeing them becoming increasingly aggressive and looking increasingly nervous. So that was uh, quite difficult to deal with because we couldn't really understand what was going on. In terms of living here, um, you know, Turkey is a little different to many other countries. I've noticed that uh, when we've had numerous terror attacks here recently, uh, people have a sense of uh, getting on with it quite quickly, of uh, holding funerals and getting back to normal. People are quite hardened here. They've grown to become quite hardened. This is uh, the last of, of numerous military coups over the years, the last one was several decades ago, but many people still have memories of that. Uh, and they have a sense of uh, brushing or leaving behind what's just happened and moving on with things. So, you know, apart from the streets being fairly quiet, uh, it's a normal uh, Monday here. Sure. I'm going to ask you to put on your analyst hat for the last question, Ben, and that is if we look at the scenes that followed the attempted coup, you know, throngs of the Turkish people in the streets, overpowering tanks, you know, running across those bridges. Do you think this has ended up being a show of might and a show of kind of solidarity on the part of the people of Turkey with their president? Has it had a kind of unexpected plus side? Well, I think for President Erdogan, it's obviously had an unexpected plus side. Um, he has come out of this looking like uh, the brave leader defending democracy, uh, the man who stood up, uh, albeit through FaceTime, um, and managed to get the word out and rally people out into the streets to defend him. I think the truth is a little bit more complex. Yes. I think that uh, there were people out on the streets on Friday night who uh, would be politically opposed to President Erdogan and his party under normal circumstances. People from opposition parties, people that would be very critical of him and his government, but they felt that uh, that defending democracy was the most important thing. Whatever one might say about President Erdogan and his party, he's won the last few elections. Nobody has uh, uh, suggested that they were rigged in any way. He's won in a free and fair uh, manner. And I think that Turks have grown used to at least uh, a form of democracy. Things are not perfect. Uh, but you can exercise your vote freely. And I think Turks have grown used to that. There's another side effect of democracy in that uh, during President Erdogan's reign, the economy has really uh, skyrocketed. Uh, the country has simply become a lot more wealthier than it was. And if we go back to the times of military rule, uh, it was a time of economic chaos. It was a time of hyperinflation in this country. And I think that people with long memories don't want to go back to that. But yeah, is it a simple case of, of support for President Erdogan and his party? No, it's more complex than that. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays itself out in the next few months. And what's great there is that for, for our audience, News24, we know that some of our viewers can follow you on Twitter. What's your Twitter account, Ben? Uh, it's uh, at Ben said one. And uh, yes, everyone's very welcome to, to do that. Brilliant interesting there that you say that really it's about stability and economic stability and I certainly see parallels there with what's happening in South Africa that at the end of the day despite the sort of political splintering that it seems like the people of Turkey wanted to maintain at least the some stability that they have at the moment. Ben said thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure.